Hunter Balsam on that first base. Mason McQuillan batting seventh and playing a second base. Defensively last night, Mason made two or three very nice plays. And batting eighth will be DHing for Corbin Castile. Will be Eli Plasman. Batting ninth in center field is Grady Gusweiler. So Castile making his third appearance on the mound for the Rams in the last seven days. Comes in with a 4-2 and two record. 29 in the third innings pitched. 1.91 ERA. 19 runs. 8 earned runs by Corbin. He's allowed 37 hits. Walked 13. Struck out 32 batters. Nice performance last Saturday over at Collida by Corbin. Just had a hard luck 3-2 loss. Went the distance. And actually, in a 2-2 game, I think the deciding run was called on the bulk. And I think that was in the bottom of the fifth inning. So a tough lock, loss last Saturday at Collida for Corbin. Mom, how's your cooler right there? Yeah, I got you saved. Oh, that's me. Four. The Patriots, Landon Johnson, Brock Behrman, and Logan Hudson will be your first three batters to face the senior writer, right-hander Corbin Castile. First pitch is inside, ball one. 11.50 for 11.54, 10.54, your first official pitch. Steele fires. Fall back third base side. Count evens at one ball and one strike. I don't know how she got over so fast. <laughs> Full week of games coming up for the Rams. We'll give you a rundown. Get a split second here. Castile's 1 1 pitch to Landon Johnson. Strike two called. Tuesday at Wasion. Thursday here versus Bluffton. Friday here versus Bryan. Saturday here versus Miller City. 1 2 pitch from Castile to Landon Johnson. Fouled off first base side or third base side on the play. Then on the 15th, that's a Monday here versus Delta. And then the 16th, Tuesday versus Holgate. Castile, long look in. Gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. 1 2 pitch. Johnson rips it right field. Harris comes in. Diving catch by Luke Harris. Nice play out there by the Rams senior right fielder, Luke Harris, to steal a hit from Landon Johnson. Now last night in the fifth inning, on a little bloop down the right field line. Wish I would have had the video, wish I would have had the camera that would have got that because I would like to see a replay of that play. I think everybody would actually. Brock Behrman steps in. Behrman, 209 on the season, has 12 RBIs and eight stolen bases. First pitch is a strike. He was honorable mention in basketball this season. Very successful sports program this season for Patrick Henry so far. Breaking ball just a bit outside. Count evens. One ball, one strike. Just underway here at Sonora High School. As always, we start about five or six, seven, eight minutes early. 1-1 one, one pitch. Strike on the outside corner. Castillo ahead. One ball and two strikes to the left fielder, Brock Beerman. Logan Hudson awaits on deck. Hudson will be on the mound for the Patriots. Castillo's 1-2. That's outside. Two balls and two strikes. Corbin's 2-2 pitch. Strike. Three called. Behrman caught looking. He goes down for out number two. Logan Hudson steps in. 341 for Hudson. 17 runs batted in. Hey, how you doing? Well, I'm better now that you're here. I had to go see George over there. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. How's George? Here you go. Steele winds it up. First pitch to Hudson. Strike called on the outside corner. Plus, the Rams have ended their tour of Putnam County, taking on the Patriots this Saturday. A little tapper, second base side. McQuillan up with it, gathers it, throws over to Bosselman in time. I'll continue my story to the bottom of the inning. 4-3 on the put out. In the inning, Patriots go quickly. For Patrick Henry, no runs, no hits, no Ram errors. Nobody left on base. After a half inning here at Groove Field at Tenor High School, 
Patrick Henry nothing, and the Tenor Rams coming to bat. Clubhouse Pizza in Nay is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in Nay will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in Nay has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street. Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Out of the first inning for the Rams, Mosier, Radzik, and Wolfram to face Logan Hudson will set the defense for the Patriots. Hudson on the mound. Wayne Better test behind the plate. Matt Heber at first. Grant Schwab at second. Aiden Behrman at short. And Nash Meyer at third. In the outfield, left field, Brock Behrman. Center field, Landon Johnson. And Colton Stewart is in right field. Houston Miranda is your DH for Better's test. My story, what I was telling was, if you take out... The big green of Ottaville, who has a 3-13 and 13 overall record. If you include the last, other than Ottaville, three opponents, Kaleida's 13-5, Columbus Grove 16-5, Patrick Henry 14-3. Those three combined records are 43-13. and 13. And with the draw tomorrow, wondered after coming off that big win last night, what kind of lineup that Patrick Henry would trot out and coach Brett Youngman, but they pretty much stuck to what they've been doing all season long. They have almost every starter in there. So he went on Saturday, looks really good on Sunday, heading into the tournament draw. Aiden Mosier is going to lead off for the Rams. First pitch to Aiden, strike called Mosier. 320 on the season, three runs batted in, has 14 walks and 15 stolen bases. I remember to set the, or start the camera on time tonight. Pitch to Mosier is high and away. One ball and one strike. But the pitcher that the Rams faced last night for Columbus Grove, Brenton Renner, he's like their 1A. And the Rams got a pretty good bat on the ball versus Renner. I'm doing well. Breaking ball, nice pitch by Logan Hudson. Strike two called. One ball and two strikes to the Rams leadoff hitter, Aiden Mosier. We said on Thursday the Rams had all grays. Last night the Rams had the green top, and tonight they have the black. Pitches outside. Two balls and two strikes to Mosier. Bottom of the first inning just underway here at Sonora High School. Lady Rams playing Swanton next door over there. Kind of a tournament tune-up game because they'll be playing Swanton next Friday here. Oh, yeah. Breaking ball inside corner. Strike three called. Mosier goes down looking. Didn't like the call. Looked to be a bit inside. Going to ring up the Rams shortstop, Caden Radzik. Radzik, 426 with 19 runs batted in on the season. I swear to God, she must have come right away. Judas, that was fast. Yeah. We gave her a piece about an hour later. Senior righty. Calls back and says, Logan Hudson hurls it, and that one stays outside. Ball one. 65 degrees on your David Frank weather forecast. Wind blowing from right to left field. See, you asked me about that. 1 0 pitch. Inside. Never have been. Radzik leads back out of the way. Two balls and no strikes. A couple of good defensive plays last night for Caden at short as well. 2 0 pitch coming from Hudson. Strike called. Watch out. John can hear me most of the time, but with which I said probably more than I should last night, but as impressive stat as what it was, 2-1 count coming to Hudson. Or from Hudson to Razik. Strike called. But Columbus Grove had 100 steals last night. And I don't know, John, did they actually steal a base last night? I, I, I didn't think so either. I didn't bring my... my my scorebook with me from last night, but 2-2 you know two, two pitch to Radzik. Breaking ball hit in between shortstop and third base for a base hit. Radzik rounds first. He's going to hold on with a single, but Eli Plasman and Dalton Wolfram did a great job 
Plasma number one, keeping runners close over there. And Dalton Wolfram, kind of nice arm behind the plate. So with Columbus Grove pretty much averaging five stolen bases a game. And they did have, I believe, 12 hits. And they did not, I don't even think they attempted the stolen base last night, honestly. So a fantastic job between Plasma and Wolfram. First pitch to Dalton Wolfram is a ball. <laughs> Radzik leads away at first. Decent lead for Caden. Pitch inside to Wolfram. Two balls and no strikes. Thanks for joining us on this Saturday late morning. Mom. No, Gail. 2-0 pitch from Hudson. There goes Radzik. Strike called. Throw down. Not in time. Radzik slides into his second base with a stolen base. Everybody's telling her how good the short case For Caden <coughs> on the season, that's stolen base number seven. Two balls and one strike for Dalton Wolfram. Has another duck on the pond out there. Long look in by Logan Hudson. Gets a sign, looks back at the runner at second. Pitch to Wolfram, stays high. Three balls and a strike. Dalton, 404. 18 RBIs and more impressive, has 11 stolen bases. And I think most of those have come in about the last 10 days. In the game last week where he had four, he had three last night. 3-1 pitch to Wolfram. Outside corner, strike called. Full count pitch to Wolfram. Taryn Ward on deck. Hudson gets the sign from his battery mate. Comes set. 3 2 pitch to Wolfram. Fouled right back this way. Count stays full. Three balls and two strikes. Coach Ronald coaching at third. Coach Tipton coaching over at first. Nachos with cheese, please. I'm going to see how this 3-2 pitch coming oh. to Wolfram. Oh! oh. oh. If Wolfram's called out on strikes, looking, and if he was actually batting in the other batter's box, I would have hit him in the knee. <laughs> As Bob Euchre would say, just a bit outside. <laughs> So Radzik and Mosier both caught looking. We have the Rams third baseman Taryn Ward, senior, batting 362. There goes Radzik down to third base. He's in there with another stolen base. So Caden's got eight steals on the season, two here this inning. Pitch to Ward was a strike. 0 and 1 is a count to the Rams third baseman Taryn Ward. Would say Logan Hudson's pitch. Breaking ball. Nice pitch. That one definitely caught the outside corner. Strike two. Razik leads away from third. 0 2 pitch coming to Ward. <coughs> Ward fouls it off first base side. The Rams are a week, a week late. Last night at Kaleida, they actually opened up their stands to the public. Still had to finish the outside, but the inside was done. <laughs> and they had a nice crowd over there from colleague Michael Hearn did that game and shared some pictures. Ground ball, second base side. Schwab scoops it up. Throws over in time to Heber, retiring Ward and the Rams. 4-3 on the putout for the third out in the inning for Tenora. No runs, one hit, no errors. And one left on after one inning of play here at Groove Field at Tenor High School. We are scoreless on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams.
back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Top of inning number two, four, five, and six, Nash Meyer, Aiden Behrman, and Mac Heber to face Corbin Castile. Nash Meyer, quite, quite the uh, season for Nash. Junior season, Nash was second team all conference as a quarterback, second team conference in basketball. Pitches inside, ball one. Just deals oh, or 1 0 oh pitch to Meyer, fouled into the glove. Count evens, one ball and one strike. Meyer, 380 on the season, 12 runs batted in with two stolen bases. Steals 1-1. One, one. Strike on the outside corner. Now, if you're a pitcher today, you can throw that on the inside line on the left-hander's batter's box and get a strike probably 9 out of 10 times. 1-2 pitch to Meyer. That one just a, just a bit outside. 2-2. Two and two. <laughs> As long as he's consistent, I think that's all anybody asks. Castillo's 2-2 two, two to Meyer. Nash... Swings away, hits it to right field. Harris comes running in, puts it away for out number one. Myers set down. Going to bring up Aiden Behrman. Behrman, 344, 14 runs batted in at eight steals. Behrman again, who is first team all defense in football, an honorable mention in basketball for the Patriots. First pitch, hammers it to... Left field coming in. A couple steps is Rams left fielder Aiden Mosier to put it away. Six hitter Mac Heber. Heber, 312, nine RBIs and three steals. Mac was honorable mention as a freshman in basketball. First pitch to him as a strike. Steals 0-1 to Heber. Strike two called. Mack down. No balls and two strikes. So quite a few games of his father, Brian, over my, <laughs> over my time. Heber laces it into the first base fence. Just missing the on-deck hitter, Grant Schwab. Now, if you're a infielder, Mac Heber's kind of the type of first baseman you want over there. He's about 6'5". He smashes this into the center field for a solid base hit. You heard, probably heard that on the crowd, Mike. That was the... That's, when you're at the plate, that's the kind of sound you want from your bat. Up to the plate, number three. Grant. So Heber's on with a two-out single. Going to bring up number seven hitter, the second baseman, Grant Schwab. Schwab, 310. Three runs batted in and three stolen bases. Heber on at first has three steals. Castillo comes set. First pitch is a strike. Yeah. Castillo's 0 1. Strike two on that outside corner. Sometimes the outside corner is a little extreme. But outside corner, nonetheless. Steals 0-2 pitch. Checks Heber at first base. Strike three called. Schwab gets caught looking for the third out. Stranding Heber at first. In the inning for the Patriots, no runs. They get the Heber single. No ram errors. And Heber is stranded at first base. After an inning and a half here at Groove Field at Sonora High School, we are scoreless on your drop zone Pete's Rea scoreboard. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Midlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Midlack of Midlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. 
protected. Bilac Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bilac Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenor Rams athletes this season. Back at Groom Field, Harris, Bosselman, and McQuillan to face Logan Hudson. Here in the bottom of inning number two, another beautiful day for baseball. Third straight decent day. So the Rams have a slew of games next week. Four games next week if you include Saturday. First pitch to Harris from Hudson is a strike. Harris, 333 with nine runs batted in on the season. Logan Hudson comes set. A one pitch. Swan on. Skied on the infield. Aiden Behrman calls off Nash Meyer and puts it away to retire Harris for the first out here in the inning. Hunter Bossom on. 271 with 12 runs batted in. Hunter with a two out, two run double yesterday. Against Columbus Grove. Bosselman lasers a nice diving stop is short by Aiden Behrman. Behrman launched himself to the shortstop side of second base and stole a base hit away from Bosselman. That's a nice play out there by Aiden Behrman. For out number two. Mason McQuillan's going to step in. Mason, first game yesterday, varsity level. Looking for his first hit, but made several nice defensive plays out there. One ball and no strike. I'll take two Pitch coming from Hudson. Swung on. Drilled into left field. Left fielder Brock Behrman takes a couple steps back. Puts it away for out number three. Rams go quickly in any number two. For Tenora, no runs, no hits. No Patriot errors. And the Rams do not leave anybody on base. Through two here at Groove Field or here at Tenora High School. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, Patrick Henry nothing. And the Tenora Rams nothing. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. Top of the third inning we go. 8-9-1 for the Patriots. Colton Stewart, Houston Miranda, and then the top, Landon Johnson, to face Corbin Castile, the senior righty. Third appearance in the last week. Pitched a gem last Saturday. Week ago today at Kaleida. Tough luck, 3-2 loss. Came on in relief. Versus Ottaville on Thursday. Pitched inning in a third. And picked up the, I think he got the win in that contest. First pitch to Stewart, outside corner strike. Colton Stewart, 167 on the season, has two runs batted in and three stolen bases. Steele winds it up. Pitch. That one, right at Mosier, takes a couple steps in, catches it waist high. Stewart nailed it. Unfortunately, hit it right at Aiden Mosier. So Stewart's retired for out number one, number nine hitter, Houston Miranda steps in. Miranda, your DH, he's hitting for the catcher, laying the betters test. 324, seven RBIs and five stolen bases for Miranda. First pitch is a strike call. have something to do. I know, but if I know that, I wouldn't have made him do it. Jeez. No balls, one strike. Check swing. Fouled third base side. Castillo ahead of Miranda. No balls and two strikes. Landon Johnson, the Patriots leadoff hitter, is on deck. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on this Saturday. Great day for baseball. 
0-2 pitch, high and away. Rams track is over at Montpelier in the 37th annual Lamerson Invitational. Lady Rams playing next door against Swanton. One ball, two strike pitch coming to Miranda. Swung on and miss. Down goes Miranda for out number two for Castile. That's the third strikeout for Corbin. Top of the lineup, Landon Johnson flew out to Luke Harris, his first plate appearance. Talked to Coach Fairchild before the game over there. He's like, yeah, this is one of those games where we really <laughs> we're treating it as a scrimmage. Breaking ball strike called. Nice pitch by Corbin. Like I said, when Swan comes in on the 12th to start the OHSAA softball playoffs, and Coach Fairchild's like, eh, we're just going to kind of play it by ear and see what happens. Second pitch is inside corner strike two. Castillo quickly ahead of Johnson. No balls and two strikes. Two outs, bases empty as a Patriots bat here in the top of the third. We are scoreless. Castillo tries to hit the outside corner. Johnson takes it the other way. Slaps it down the left field line. Mosier comes over to pick it up. Not before Johnson has a two-out double. Castillo was up on the count. No balls in. Two strikes. Tried to hit that outside corner. Johnson. Nice adjustment by Landon. Took it the other way. Landed about two feet fair inside the line. Halfway down the left field line. Brock Behrman steps in. Struck out looking. His first plate appearance. Squares around to bunt. Brings the bat back. Behrman. 209 with... 12 runs batted in. Sir. 0 for 1. Runner at second. Johnson leads away. Castillo comes set. Looks back at Johnson. 1 0 pitch. Ball 2. Patriots in the all gray with the red numbers and lettering with white trim. Kind of looks like the Rams gray uniforms, but with red instead of the Hunter Green. Look, actually, a nice look. Kind of the old school 80s V-neck, which the Rams have swung on and missed. Two balls and one strike. Some teams have the button tops. A lot of the high schools are going back to the old V-neck, like we saw in the 70s and 80s. Kind of like that look. I'm old school, so. <laughs> and so is John. 2-1 pitch inside. Three balls and one strike to Brock Behrman. Strike zone's got a little tight here on Castillo this at bat. Johnson leads away at second. Looks in, gets a sign from Wolfram. Looks back at Johnson a second. Castillo's 3-1. Swung on hit right past Castillo. Radzik scoops it up, fires over to Bosselman in time to get Brock Behrman 6-3 on the putout, and that retires the Patriots here in the third. No runs, one hit. No Ram errors, and the Patriots leave one on base after two and a half here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. On your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard, we are still scoreless. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad, 419 419- 9481-3738. Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Back at Groove Field, we are scoreless as we head to the bottom of the third. Eight, nine, and one. Plasma and Gus Wilder then Mosier to face senior righty Logan Hudson. Next door, Lady Rams lead 2-1, top of inning number two over there. Tenora comes in at 13-5. They will actually play Swanton on May 12th in the opening round of the sectionals here at Sonora High School. So, for those of you just tuning in, talk to Coach Fairchild before the game, and he's treating it like a football scrimmage. He's really not going to show too much. He's, I think he's actually put Skyly out in right field. He was kind of thinking about I'm not actually sure if he went through with that, but he says Skyly's probably not going to see too much time on the mound today. 
You like Plasma is your DH Plasma hitting for Corbin Castillo. First pitch is a ball. Eli, 250 on the season with six runs batted in. Grady Gusweiler awaits on deck for Tenora. Logan Hudson's pitch. Strike called. Better test behind the plate. Matt Heber at first. Grant Schwab at second. Aiden Behrman at short. And Nash Meyer at third. Outfield left to right. Brock Behrman, Landon Johnson, and Colton Stewart. Pitches swung on, skied first base side. Heber steps into foul territory and puts it away for out number one, retiring Plasman. Yellow. That's not my phone, by the way. Either Coach Rudder or Ned. Somebody's got a call next or down below. <laughs> Grady Gusweiler steps in. Grady, 278 with six RBIs. Grady, 13 base on balls this season. Smashes that one in the center field for a base hit. So Grady reaches on a one-out single here in the third. Didn't get to finish my line on Grady. He has four stolen bases. <laughs> or five now. <laughs> to include the one from a couple days ago. Got to update my stats. I just kind of scribble them as I go. And I spend Sunday usually updating stats. So they're like 98% accurate. <laughs> Sometimes I can't read my own writing, but runner at first, one out top of the lineup. Aiden Mosier, first pitch is inside. Nice stop by Lane Better Test. Coach Tipton down there at first. And BR, who recently picked up his 400th career win here at Tenora, coaching at third. 1 0 pitch coming. Strike called. One ball, one strike, one out. I think uh, Coach George, Aaron George, actually is coaching first base for the Patriots. I'll have to look next time out. I didn't pay any attention last inning, but Heber holding on. Gus Weiler at first. Big lead by Grady. Throw over by Hudson. Gus Weiler back with a head first dive. Mac Heber over there at first base had a nice, he actually came off the bench for the Patriots basketball team. He got a heck of a career in front of him. There goes Grady, pitches high, throw down second base, not nearly in time. Gus Weiler on with a stolen base. I think that's Grady's sixth deal. Two balls, one strike to count to Mosier. Gus Weiler leads away from second. Ground ball, second base side. Grant Schwab up with it, throws over to Heber. Down to third base goes Gus Weiler. So Mosier's retired 4-3 for out number two. Going to bring up the Ram shortstop, Caden Radzik. Radzik singled and has two stolen bases in the first inning. Logan Hudson, the senior writer, on the mound for the 2023 NWOL champion, Patrick Henry Patriots. Pitch to Radzik. Strike call. Pittsburgh Sioux. Watching. And Bridget. Watching. At Ian's. I assume Ian has Little League somewhere. 0 1 pitch. Breaking ball just misses. Count evens at one ball and one strike. That was one of the better pitches we've seen this morning. <laughs> Hudson comes set. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Radzik. Breaking ball high and away. Two balls and one strike. We got burgers being grilled behind us. We got popcorn being popped below us. I can hear it. 2-1 count to Radzik. Swung on. Fouled back this way. Two balls and two strikes to Caden Radzik. Two outs. Runner at third is Grady Gusweiler. Still looking for our first run. Both teams have two hits here on the bottom of the third inning. Here from Groove Field. Hudson's pitch to Radzik. Just got a piece of it. Fouls it back into the screen. Count stays at two and two. Dalton Wolfram on deck. Races to get the ball and races back. Dalton full of energy. <laughs> 2-2 pitch coming to Radzik. Swung on. Shallow fly ball. Center fielder comes over. Calls off. 
Landon Johnson calls off Colton Stewart to put it away. Retiring Radzik and the Rams here in the third. In the inning for Tenora. No runs. They get a hit from Grady Gusweiler. No errors for the Patriots. And the Rams leave one on base. Heading to the top of the fourth inning already. You're on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Patrick Henry nothing. And the Tenora Rams nothing. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. The law office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Groove Field here at Sonora High School, 3, 4, and 5 for the Patriots. Logan Hudson, Nash Meyer, and Aiden Behrman to face off against Corbin Castile. Castile, 38 pitches, 29 strikes for Corbin. He's been on the groove here lately, ever since that Edgerton game about three weeks ago. Corbin has pretty much been lights out on the mound. Hudson steps in 0 for 1 today. First pitch, outside corner, strike called. Hudson, 341 on the season with 17 runs batted in. Corbin gets a sign from Dalton Wolfram. Comes set. Pitch strike two on the outside corner. Corbin's 0 2 coming to Logan Hudson. Just misses. One ball and two strikes. Set the Rams defense here while we get a chance. Castile on the mound. Dalton Wolfram behind the plate. 1-2 pitch coming to Logan Hudson. Way outside. Count evens. Two balls in. Two strikes. Ball someone at first. Quentin McQuinton. Mason. <laughs> Calling him everything but his name here the last two days. Mason McQuillan at second. Radzik at short. Ward at third. Pitches high. Count goes full. And of course last night when Mason made that nice play out there in center field, somebody clipped the highlight down and of course that's when I called him Logan. <laughs> 3-2 pitch coming. Strike call on the inside corner. Down goes Hudson for the first out here in the inning. Hudson caught looking. That's the fourth strikeout for Corbin Castile. Nash Meyer steps in. He's 0 for 1. Flow to Harrison the second. Nash 380 on the season. Steele winds it up. First pitch to Nash outside off the glove of Wolfram. That's to the backstop. Usually I see Nash's dad, Tony, at Patrick Henry events, and I didn't see him today. See Coach Heber down there, but I'm sure Tony's down there. I just don't see him. Pitch to Nash is two balls and no strikes. He said, for those of you tuning in, Nash, heck of a junior season. Second team all NWL in football as a quarterback and second team all league in basketball. Pitches inside ball three. Three balls and no strikes to the Rams. The Rams to the Patriots. Third baseman Nash Meyer. Hitting in the fourth spot for Coach Youngman. Outside just a bit low. So Nash Meyer heads down to first base. Four pitch walk for Corbin Castile. Castile, 47 pitches, 32 strikes. Pretty much been in the, in the zone. Here today. So Meyer with a one out walk heads down to first. Aiden Behrman's going to step in. Behrman 0 for 1. 344 on the season for Behrman. Another one having a fantastic season. Throw back over. Nash Meyer head first dive. Senior Behrman was first team all defense in football and honorable mention in basketball. The steal comes set. Pitch outside corner strike called. Wow. 
reset the Rams outfield here when I get a chance. I guess I forgot to name our outfield. Way outside, nice backhand is stopped by Wolfram. Mosier is in left, Gus Weiler in center, and Harris is in right. DH is Eli Plasman, DHing for Corbin Castile. One ball, one strike. The count to Aiden Behrman. Breaking ball, hammered in the center field. Gus Weiler's got to play it on a bounce. Cuts it off before it goes in the gap. Holds Meyer at second, and Behrman's on with... A one-out single, so the Patriots, biggest threat of the game for either team, have runners on first and second with one out. Mac Heber steps in, and he smoked a single right through the box. His first plate appearance, 3-12 on the season for Mac with nine runs batted in. Mac bats from the right side. Freshman asks for timeout, steps out, digs back in. It's Father Brian, quite the career at Patrick Henry. He was a state champion, I believe, in 97. Current coach of the Patriots basketball team. Heber fouls it off. First base side out of play. He actually went to that uh, game. It was Antwerp and Patrick Henry at Defiance High School in the, I think it was the district final, if I recall. That was a heck of a game. Patrick Henry pretty much dominated the Archers from start to finish. Runners lead from first and second. Castillo comes set. 0-1 pitch coming to Heber. Breaking ball swung on and missed. Strike two. Nice pitch by Corman. Three hits allowed by Castillo through uh, three in the third innings. Got four strikeouts and one walk. Castillo leans in, gets the sign, comes set. 0-2 pitch to Heber. Tries to hit that outside corner. Heber fouls it off first base side. Everybody go at him now. One's starting to pick up a couple more miles per hour, blowing from right to left. Castile don't like the first sign or the second one. Now finds one he likes. 0-2 pitch to Heber. Outside. Throw down to first base. Good stop. Bosselman <laughs> snagged it. That was ticketed for right field. Hunter Bosselman. Not a fan. Reached out there and saved about two bases. One, two pitch from Castile to Heber. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Heber. Big out for Castile. Two outs now. To Going to bring up Grant Schwab. Schwab, 310 on the season. Struck out looking in the second. Steele looks back at Dashmeyer at second. Asked for time. I think Schwab did. Steele steps off. Schwab steps out. Going to reset and do it again. Two on, two out. Scoreless here in the top of the fourth. Steele. First pitch coming to Schwab. Strike called. We said the tournament draws tomorrow. We usually they have that between one and three, depending on how fast it goes. So tomorrow, about an hour, two hours from now, we'll figure out where the Rams play and who they play in the tournament. Strike two called on the outside corner, and as Coach Tipton said, there's no better tune-up than what the Rams schedule has been over the last three out of four games. Even Ottaville was, gave the Rams quite a fight. We said the three opponents' record, which I'll 0-2 pitch coming. Swung on, tap foul. Schwab stays alive. Between Kaleida, who the Rams lost to 3-2 last Saturday, Columbus Grove, who the Rams beat last night, and Patrick Henry today, the combined records of those three teams is 43-13. and O2 pitch coming from Castile to Schwab. Just misses. One ball and two strikes. If I get home tonight... See her tonight, this afternoon, soon enough. I can actually upload the video, and it should be available by 8 or 9 o'clock tonight on YouTube for those interested in re-watching and high def. 
Swung on, tap foul, third base side. Coach Youngman says, ah, I don't want that one. <laughs> Goes down the third base fence down there. One of the JV members scoops it up. Runners at first and second for the Patriots. Throw back to second. Razik with a nice one-handed snag as he grabs his cap that was flying off. Save that one from sailing into center field. Two nice defensive plays. Saved errors here this inning. One ball, two strikes. To the hitter, Grant Schwab. Nash Meyer and Heber lead away from first and second. Pitch breaking ball swung on and missed. Schwab way behind that one. Fifth strikeout or sixth strikeout for Castillo. In the inning, the Patriots threatened. They do not score. No runs for Patrick Henry. They get one hit. No Ram errors. Almost had two. Almost doesn't count. And Patrick Henry leaves 2 1 base. Headed to the bottom of the fourth inning here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Still looking for our first run. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Bottom of four we go. No runs on three hits. No errors for Patrick Henry for the Rams. No runs, two hits. An errorless ball for Sonora. For the Rams. Three, four, and five. Wolf from Warden Harris to face Logan Hudson next door. Swan with a 3 2 lead over the Lady Rams. The bottom of the third at Senior Day next door for the Lady Rams. Dalton Wolfram digs in. Wolfram struck out looking in the first. 404 coming in for Dalton has 18 runs batted in and 11 stolen bases. Logan Hudson, 39 pitches, 29 strikes through three. Nice slow breaking ball, strike called. Patrick Henry is Division Four, so we will not see the Patriots in the postseason. Pitch is high. One ball and one strike. Columbus Grove is also Division Four, so we will not see them either. More likely we'll see Fairview for like the third straight season. 1-1 <laughs> pitch coming. Wolfram reaches out, serves that into the right center gap. Johnson cuts it off before it gets through, holding Wolfram to a long single. So Dalton Wolfram starts the Rams' fourth inning with a shot into the right to center gap. Karen Ward digs in. Ward 0 for 1, 362 on the season with 11 batted in. Logan Hudson works strictly out of the set position, so this is nothing new to him. Third hit for the Rams. There goes Wolfram. Throw down to second. Head first dive. Wolfram hangs on the base for dear life. Dalton picks up uh, stolen base number 12. Yeah. As I said earlier, I think he's got 10 of those in the last 10 days. So Wolfram in scoring position with nobody out. Count to Karen Ward. That last pitch was a strike. No balls and a strike. Ward asks for time. He steps out. On deck is Luke Harris. Still scoreless here in the bottom of the fourth. Game's about 40 minutes old, and we're just flying through here. 0-1 pitch to Ward. Heron swings, fouls it off. Third base side. Nashmeyer heads over. It's out of play. No balls and two strikes to the Rams senior third baseman, Taron Ward. Yeah. 
Nice senior football season for Karen as well. Logan Hudson steps off. Now steps back on. No balls and two strike pitch coming to Ward from Hudson. Way high. Reaching up is a better test to snag it. Coach Rudder next or next door down below us. Can occasionally hear him. One ball, two strike pitch to Ward. Swung on and missed. Ward goes down swinging for out number one. Gonna bring up Rams right fielder Luke Harris. Harris, first team all GMC in basketball this past season. Poured in 18 points a contest. Right, top 10 in Rams history for basketball points per game. A nice senior season here in baseball as well. Dalton Wolfram, always a threat to steal, leads away from second. Pitch two, Harris is high, ball one. Yes, yeah, actually, as John said, last night he swiped third. Kind of an insurance run at the time as well. Throw in into left field. Dalton scooped himself up and scored. There he goes. Throw down to third. Not in time. Meyer puts the tag on him. Wolfram got in there. Another stolen base for Dalton. So Wolfram is at third with one out to count to Luke Harris's two balls and no strikes. Now you don't see third base stolen very often unless you know you could make it because if you're at third base when you get called out and you got to look up and see Coach Renouette. Suicide squeeze. Harris puts it down. Here comes Wolfram. Harris sacrifice gets the RBI on the suicide squeeze. Scoring Dalton Wolfram. That stolen base pays off. Rams plate the first run of the contest here in the bottom of the fourth. Grab a one nothing lead. Stepping in, Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman 0 for 1. No, he can't. He can't. Almost had a hit last time at bat, unfortunately, as this pitch comes through. Pitch is high, ball one. Aiden Behrman kind of stole the hit from Hunter. Wasted it. It looked like it was ticketed for center field, and Aiden Behrman, the Patriot shortstop, the diving catch. Pitch inside, strike called. One ball, one strike, two outs. Rams have plated the run here to take a one nothing lead in the bottom of the fourth over the Patriots. Breaking ball, Bosselman smashes it on the ground. Unfortunately, right at Grant Schwab. Schwab drops to both knees, scoops it up, fires Hunter Bosselman out at first base, 4-3 on the putout. In the inning, Rams finally break the ice, one run, and they do so on one hit. No errors, and nobody left on base. Through four here at Groove Field at Sonora High School on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Sonora won, and Patrick Henry... Nothing. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams. Back at Group Field, Rams with a one nothing lead as we head to the top of inning number 5. Yeah. Eight, nine, and then the top of the order for the Patriots. Stewart, Miranda, and Landon Johnson to face Corbin Castile. Castile thus far, first pitch is a ball. Castile, four innings work, just allowed three hits. Struck out six so far. 1-0 pitch coming. Someone on foul back, and he's walked one. 
62 pit or 63 pitches, 44 strikes for Corbin. Really, been around the plate other than I think one or two batters. Meyer worked a four pitch walk earlier. 1-1 one, one pitch outside, two balls and a strike to the right fielder, the number eight hitter, Colton Stewart, 167 for Stewart. He's 0 for 1. Steals 2-1 pitch to Stewart. Strike call in the outside corner. Houston Miranda waits on deck for the Patriots. 2-2 two, two pitch. A little bit outside. Count goes full. Patriots probably had a nice celebration after the game last night, clinching, clinching the NWOAL Baseball Championship. First time since 2007 for the Patriots. Strike three called. Stewart caught looking for the first out. Seventh strikeout for Castile. Houston Miranda, the number nine hitter. Miranda, the DH, batting for the catcher. Better's test. 324 for Miranda. Struck out swinging. Ground ball to Ward at third. Gathers himself. Throws over in time. Out number two. 5-3 on the put out top of the lineup. Landon Johnson steps in. Johnson doubled in the third. He is one for two. 341 coming in. 17 runs batted in. Has 11 steals, so you want to keep him off the base pads. Castillo winds it up. Comes set. Pitch. Breaking ball. Outside corner. Strike call. Nice pitch by Corbin. Corbin here the last two weeks has pitched fantastic. Yeah, oh, one pitch. Swung on, driven deep over the head of Harris right field. Oh, no, actually, Harris caught it. Harris caught up to it. I thought that was going to hit the fence. Harris turned around, jetted back. Put the glove up and caught the drive off the bat of Johnson for out number three. Nice play out there. Put a star by that one, Luke Harris. In the inning, Patriots go in order. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and nobody left on base. We're headed to the bottom of the fifth inning here at Tenora High School. we drop dropped zone pizzeria scoreboard. It is Tenora one and Patrick Henry nothing. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Firestone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015 or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. Bottom of the fifth from Tenora. 7, 8, and 9. McQuillan, Plasman, and Gusweiler to face Logan Hudson. Hudson's pitched four innings, allowed just three hits, one run, struck out three, and has not walked anybody. 52 pitches, 35 strike for Hudson. That one, first pitch to McQuillan is a ball. Mason, 0 for 1. Back-to-back -back starts at second base for McQuillan. Logan Hudson comes set. 1-0 pitch to McQuillan is high. Ball two. Rams back in action Tuesday at Wauseon. 5 o'clock start there. Back here, then the rest of the schedule is at home. I would assume including at least one sectional game should be here. Pitch is strike called to McQuillan. Two balls and a strike. Bluffton, Bryan, Miller City, Delta, and Holgate will be the remaining schedule all at home for Tenora. The Rams have Monday off, travel to Wauseon. Quillen asks for time. He steps out. 
two balls and a strike to Logan Rams with a one nothing lead as they bat here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Inside ball three. First pitch was 10.54, so we're approaching an hour into the game and we're in the bottom of the fifth inning. There are some games were still in the second or third inning after an hour. Both starting pitchers worked in very quickly and very effectively. Logan McQuillan, just as I say that, works a walk from Logan Hudson. So McQuillan trots down the first base. Going to bring up Eli Plasman. So Eli steps in. 0 for 1, 250 on the season for Eli. McQuillan at first does not have any base running stats. First pitch, strike call to Rams designated hitter Eli Plasman. Plasman hitting for Castile. Throw over to first base, back with the head first dive is McQuillan. Only run of the game pretty much as a Dalton Wolfram run. Singled, stole second, stole third, came home on a suicide squeeze bunt by Luke Harris. Oh, one pitch. There goes McQuillan. Pitches a strike. Throw down high. McQuillan in there with a stolen base. Second baseman came down a little awkwardly. Down there for Patrick Henry. Grant Schwab reached high to grab it. Came down. Ball popped out of his glove. McQuillan was in there safely regardless. So Logan with his first stolen base of the season. At the varsity level. Logan played obviously JV quite a bit. No balls and two strikes to count to Plasman. Hudson comes set. First pitch outside. Ball one. Eli thought about taking it the other way. One ball, two strikes. Lady Rams with a 5-3 lead next door. Top of the fourth inning. Playing Swanton. See, kind of, a, Coach Fairchild said, a football scrimmage. Logan Hudson comes set, spins around. McQuillan goes running back to second base. Hudson does not throw the ball back there. Comes set. One two pitch coming to Plasman. Eli Swiss smashes it over the head of the second baseman. McQuillan hits the bag at third. He's going to stay right there. Nice throw in from Colton Stewart. Stewart got to the ball, over through the cutoff man, and alertly, Eli Plasman juts down to second base. So as soon as I say Colton Stewart made a nice throw in, that's not what you want to do there. You want to hit your cutoff man. So now Eli Plasman is at second. Or Logan, or Logan. Mason McQuillan is at third. Timeout. First year coach Brent Youngman going to come out. Have a conversation with his infield. And we're going to have a new pitcher. And we'll be back. And we'll give you the changes. And we'll do it right after this. Rams have runners at second and third with nobody out. And they lead one nothing over the Patriots of Patrick Henry. We'll be back with the changes right after this. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course, the hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. Firestone Tavern wishes the best to all the Tenora teams. 
Fairchild Family Chiropractic is happy to announce that Dr. Kayla is now accepting new patients. Long-term wellness continues to be our goal for families of Northwest Ohio. We help you achieve this goal by working closely with you and personalizing your treatment plan based on your needs. Come see Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla at 100 Stadium Drive in Defiance or give them a call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at FairchildFamilyChiro.com. Dr. AJ and Dr. Kayla, proud members of the Sonora Athletic Boosters say go Rams. Back at Sonora High School, Rams with runners at second and third with nobody out. They lead 1-0. A slew of changes here for the Patriots. Nice Meyer goes from third base to first base. Miranda goes into the game at third. He was a DH. Matt Heber goes out to right field, and the new catcher is Logan Hudson. So Hudson replaces Better Test as the catcher. Matt Kieber's at first. Grant Schwab is at second. Behrman's at short. Miranda's at third. Outfield should be Behrman in left, Johnson in center, and Matt Kieber is now in right. For the Rams, thanks, John, for keeping all that straight. <laughs> Grady Gosweiler steps in. Huge runs out there for the Rams. Grady... Singled and stole the base in the third. New pitcher, Daniel Smeltz. I forgot, after all those changes, I forgot to mention the, the main one. Smeltz, first pitch to Gus Weiler is a strike. Smeltz comes set. Pitch high. One ball and one strike. Smeltz definitely bringing the heat. You can hear that glove pop in the background. Schmelt senior righty comes set. 1-1 one, one pitch to Gusweiler. Tap. Run it, run it, run it, run it, run it. Back to the mound. Pitcher grabs the ball, tries to tag McQuillan. The ball pops out of Schmelt's glove. Scoring is McQuillan. Run number two. The little tapper back to the mound. Schmelt's come racing in, grabbed it, lunged at McQuillan. In doing so, the ball popped out of his glove as McQuillan dove. Schmelt's McQuillan and... The plate, all about the same spot. The ball tumbled from Schmelt's glove, allowing McQuillan to score. So Gusweiler with an RBI. He's on at first base. And Plasman down at third. Runners at the corners. There goes Gusweiler. Throw back to third. Plasman dives back in ahead of the throw. Miranda put the tag on Plasman. So Grady with another stolen base, second of the game. He's down at second. Plasman at third. Gus Weiler at second. Pitch to Mosier was a ball. Mosier struck out looking in the first, grounded out to second in the third. Mosier bats from the left side. Schmeltz comes set. Pitch to Mosier is high and away. Ball two. Relax here, Bimo. Relax. I have all the stats for Patrick Henry, but their pitching stats are not complete, so I don't have the full pitching numbers for the Patriots. Pitch was outside to Mosier. Two balls and one strike. Five appearances for Schmeltieri is .55. Two one pitch. Way outside. Got 11 strikeouts. In 12 innings, walked seven, allowed eight hits, just one earned run. 3 1 count is, or 3 1 is now the count to Mosier. Schmeltz comes set. Mosier slaps it into left field for a base hit. Plasman scores. Gusweiler stops at third. RBI single by Aiden Mosier. Mosier took it the other way, collects an RBI. Rams lead three to nothing with two here in the bottom of the fifth. Nice to see Mosier. It's as much heat that Schmeltz is bringing. You put the bat on the ball, which Mosier did. Nice adjustment. Took it the other way between the shortstop and third baseman. Going to bring up Caden Radzik. Radzik, one for two with a single and a stolen base in the first. First pitch to Caden. Strike called. Runners on the corners. Mosier at first. Always a threat to go. And Gusweiler on at third. 
good, good ball to steal. Schmelz in relief of Logan Hudson. Schmelz comes set. There goes Mosier. Throw goes down to second base. Mosier's in safely. Gus Weiler did not go. So stolen base by Mosier. No balls in. Two strikes. The pitcher's a strike to Caden Radzik. 16th steal for Mosier. Runners at second and third. Still nobody out for Snore here in the bottom of the fifth. Schmelz has pitched to Radzik. A little tapper third base side foul. Hudson Miranda scoops it up just outside the coach's box and fires it back to Schmelz. Going to reset and do it again. Mosier at second leads away. Gus Weiler at third. He's anchored there by Coach Renelad. Radzik bats from the right side. Junior shortstop. Asks for time. He steps out. Smeltz gets the sign. 0-2 pitch to Caden. Oh, yeah. Drills it in the gap in left center field. That's going to score two. Here comes Gus Weiler. Right behind him is Mosier. Good job, guys. Caden Radzik with a two RBI single. Puts the Rams up 5-0. Rams with four here in the fifth. Dalton Wolfram steps in. Dalton struck out looking in the first and created a run in the fourth all by himself. Single, stole two bases and scored on a suicide squeeze put down by Luke Harris. Radzik on it first. Already has two stolen bases. There he goes again. Pitches low and away. Nice stop by the catcher, Hudson. But not before Radzik. Is down there with another third steal of the day. Radzik leads away. Pitch to Wolfram is 1 0. Smelts his pitch. Outside corner. Count evens. One ball and one strike. Still nobody out here in the Rams' fifth. Four spot on the board. They lead 5 0. Seven hits now for the Rams. Smelts looks back at the runner at second. Radzik leads away. 1 1 pitch coming to Dalton Wolfram. Little tapper, third base side. Third baseman Miranda comes in, throws over to first baseman Nash Meyer to retire Wolfram. 5-3, that's the first out. Radzik goes down to third. Heron Ward steps in. Ward 0 for 2, 362 on the season, so Terrence due for a hit. Coach Renelad asks for time. Goes down and talks to his runner down to second, Caden Radzik. Rams came in with 48 stolen bases as a team. Smelts come set. There goes Radzik. Throw not in time. Radzik with another stolen base. So Caden with three steals here. Today that was that was a great jump as John said. Pitcher was as soon as he raised his leg, Caden was gone. Pitch was a strike to Ward. Smelt is 0-1 coming to Ward. He comes set to the plate. Outside ball one. One ball, one strike, one out here to Taryn Ward. Runner at third, Caden Radzik. Rams lead five to nothing. Four runs here in the fifth, and still. Chipping away, have more to go. Suicide squeeze again. Ward fouls it back. Rams went to several Final Fours. They're all there. They're all there on the fence, doing exactly that. 2011, 12, 13, and 14. 2014 won the state title. One, two pitch coming. They're Pitch to Ward is outside. Two balls and two strikes. In the state semifinal, Coach Renolette with the game tied actually had somebody straight steal third base in the bottom of the seventh inning, and the Rams won on a steal of home. 2-2 pitch to Ward over his head. 
a little breaking ball. <laughs> Three balls and two strikes to the Rams' third baseman, Taryn Ward. Smelts with a little soft breaking ball behind Taryn Ward. Smelts comes set. Little check swing soft liner to the second baseman, Grant Schwab. Ward tried to hold back, couldn't. That's the second out. So Terrence retired on a little soft liner to the second baseman. Gonna bring up Luke Harris. Harris becomes the eighth batter to bat here in the fifth inning. Runner at third, two outs now. Radzik leads away. Harris with that suicide squeeze in the fourth. Pitch is a strike at the time. That was the first run of the ball game. Harris put down the squeeze, scoring Dalton Wolfram. Smelt is 0-1 coming to Harris. Swung on and missed. Smeltz put it on the fist of Harris. Harris swung through it. Harris down, no balls, and two strikes. Two outs, runner at third for Tenora. They lead 5-0 here in the bottom of the fifth. 0-2 pitch, way outside. Logan Hudson just saved a run with that. Had to reach across his body and snag it in the left-hand batter's box. Harris digs back in from the right side. One-two pitch from Smeltz. Oh, breaking ball. Harris skies it on the infield. The shortstop, Aiden Behrman, calls it, puts it away. For out number three in the inning, the Rams send eight to the plate, and they score four runs and they do so on three hits no errors and Rams leave one on through five here at Groove Field on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard it is the Tenor Rams five and the Patrick Henry Patriots nothing we'll be back right after this on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tenora Rams Live. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Headed to the top of the sixth inning, and just like that, the Tenor Rams with a 5 nothing lead. Next door, John reports, Lady Rams are up five or 12-5 to five over Swanton. That game next door is in the bottom of the fifth. So very seldom do you see a baseball game ahead of a softball game, and we have done that. We just whizzed through up until the last inning. This game was just flying by. So Lady Rams with a seven-run lead in their... Non-conference game versus Swan. Here for the Patriots, 2-3-4, and four, Beerman, Hudson, and Meyer to face Corbin Castile. Castile's 1-0 pitch, swung on, drilled to left field. Mosier over by the line, puts it away. Retiring Brock Beerman for out number one. Up to the plate, number 21, Logan Hudson. Logan Hudson's going to step in. He is 0 for 2, struck out looking. His last plate appearance in the fourth. 341 for Hudson. Hudson started the game on the mound. Steele winds it up. First pitch, check swing. Just misses the outside corner. Ball one. Castillo has gone the distance thus far. Pitch great. Pitch is fouled right back into your front room. One ball and one strike. <laughs> to Logan Hudson, Nash Meyer on deck. 14-3 Patriots, 6-1 in the conference. 1-1 one, one pitch, just a bit high. Two balls and one strike. Steele gets a sign from Wolfram. Come set. 
Ground ball. McQuillan dies. Deflects it to Radzik at second. Nice effort by Mason McQuillan down there. Going to be an infield single for Logan Hudson. So Hudson with a leadoff single with the Patriots trailing here in the top of the six by a score of 5 nothing. Just a fourth hit off of Castile through five. Going to bring up Nash Meyer. First pitch to Nash as a ball. Nash started the third, moved over to first last inning. The slew would change for the Patriots. 380 on the season for Meyer. He walked his last plate appearance. Fouls this one back. One ball, one strike, one out here in the top of the six. Runner at first for the Patriots is Logan Hudson. 71 pitches for Corbin. 50 strikes. <laughs> a 2 to 3 ratio for the most part. That's pretty good. Breaking ball stays outside. Two balls and one strike to Nash Meyer. On deck is Aiden Behrman. That is Coach George coaching down there at first base. 2 1 pitch coming to Meyer. Castillo set. Let's her go. Meyer takes it the other way. That's a single in front of Luke Harris. Harris comes running in, throws it in, holds the runner at second. So Hudson at second, Meyer on at first. Up to the plate, number 11, Aiden Behrman. One out. Patriots have put two on. Going to bring up Aiden Behrman. Behrman, the number five hitter, the shortstop, is one for two, single in the fourth. 344 coming in. Time out. Coach Tipton's going to go out there and talk to his infield and Corbin. Uh, Coach George was a member of the coaching staff here for football for quite a few years. Moved over to the Patriots coaching staff <laughs> for football on the defensive side of the ball. Now a assistant coach here on the Patriots baseball staff, all while still teaching here at Tenora High School. So Coach George making the trip. That's not a that's not a short trip over to Patrick Henry. I know. Man. Meeting's over. Back to the dugout goes Coach Tipton. Meyer leads away from first. Hudson leads away from second. Stepping in is Aiden Behrman. Castillo long look in gets a sign from Wolfram. First pitch to Behrman, strike on the outside corner. Mac Heber's on deck. This is a huge out right here. I had one too. You're good too? Yep. <laughs> Rams infield trying to get in behind Hudson there, keeping him close. 0 1 pitch. Just misses outside. One ball and one strike. Steele slowing way down here with the runners on base. 1-1 one, one pitch coming to Behrman. Swung on, hits shortstop side. Radzik bobbles it, scoops it up, throws to McQuillan for the force out. It did get Nash Meyer at second. Ground ball to Radzik. Perfect double play ball. Got a little too quick. The ball kind of stayed down on him, didn't hop up. Radzik was going to scoop the ball up, step on the bag and fire over to first base. Bobbled it. Well, they got Meyer on the fielder's choice at second for out number two. So, Behrman's on at first on the fielder's choice. Six unassisted on the out at second. Two outs now. Runners at the corners for the Patriots. Matt Keeber steps in. Singled in the third. Throw over to first base. Behrman's back safely. And Heber struck out in the fourth. Yes, it is. This is a huge out again here. We're five nothing Rams here at the top of the six. Castillo has gone the distance. Looked very good. Throw back over to first base. Behrman back safely. Pitch. Outside corner strike called. Mac Heber's like, I am I got long arms, but I don't have that long arms. <laughs> Heber 3-12 on the season. Castillo comes set. Pitch to Heber. Bouncer over the head of 
Castillo. Radzik comes on, makes a nice throw over to first place. That's a heck of a play by Caden Radzik to retire Heber and the Patriots. 6-3 on the putout for round number three. Patriots threaten here in the sixth. They do not score, leaving runners at first and third. No runs for Patrick Henry. They get two hits in the inning, no ram errors, and two runners left on. We're headed to the bottom of inning number six here at Sonora High School. Sonora five and Patrick Henry nothing. We'll be back right after this timeout here on Sonora Rams Live. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and soon to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back at Groove Field here at Sonora High School, bottom of the six we go. Rams with a 5 nothing lead for Tenora. Hunter Bosselman, Mason McQuillan, and Eli Plasman, your three hitters to face. Daniel Smelt. Smeltz came in last, last, last inning for Logan Hudson. And with that change came a slew of changes as well. Logan Hudson went from the mound to behind the plate. Ash Meyer went from third base to first base. Miranda, Houston Miranda went to third base, and Matt Heber went from first base to a right field. Bosselman steps in. First pitch from Schmeltz to the plate. Up and in. Leans Bosselman back. Ball one. Bosselman 0 for 2 officially was robbed of a single by shortstop Aiden Behrman in the second. Schmeltz is 1-0. Hit right back through the middle. That one nobody's going to get. That goes in the center field for a base hit. Bosselman leads off the six with the single. Hunter's upped his average about 100 points in the last week as well. Finally starting to... He was hitting the ball. Unfortunately, he was hitting it right at him. Hunter's starting to see the ball and hit the ball very well here. Should be two for three. He said, unfortunately, he's not one for three. So, Bo- Connor Wolfram, as we saw last night in the sixth inning, on a pinch run for Hunter Bosselin. Logan, or Logan, goodness gracious. Mason McQuillan is going to step in. Logan's playing next door. Courtney's probably bopping back and forth. That guy even had Courtney in the game earlier. <laughs> All McQuillans are playing today. <laughs> So Mason's playing here. Logan's having senior day next to us. Rams were up 12 to 5 in the bottom of the fifth last report. First pitch to Mason. Swings and fouls it back. Strike one. Schmelz in the second inning of relief here. Quillen digs back in. The junior bats from the right side. Second start here in consecutive days. A second base for the Rams. Schmelt's long look finally comes set. Wolfram, short lead at first. Takes off. Pitch to McQuillan's a strike. No throw. Connor Wolfram with a stolen base. So for Connor, picked up a stolen base last night as well, I believe. 0-2 0-2 pitch coming to Mason McQuillan. Breaking ball stays high. One ball and two strikes. Nobody out. Connor Wolfram leads away from second. Second stole. Yeah, this is Connor's second steal. Yes. <laughs> David Smelch comes set. 1-2 pitch coming to the plate. So 
swung on and missed. Down goes McQuillan on the breaking ball. Mason out number one here in the sixth. Going to bring up Rams designated hitter Eli Plasman. Plasman hitting for Castile is one for two. Scored a run in the fifth. Schmelz comes set. First pitch to Plasman. Strike called. Plasman asked for time. He steps out. A little long look there by Daniel Schmeltz. Schmeltz looks back at Connor Wolf from a second. 0 oh, 1 pitch coming to Plasman. Plasman fouls it off. Here's the catcher of the umpire at the plate. No balls and two strikes. Logan Hudson said started the game on the mound. Now he's behind the plate. Schmeltz is 0-2 coming to Plasman. Wolfram leads away. Swung on and missed. Down goes Plasman. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Schmeltz. Grady Gusweiler steps in. Grady. Last inning. Singled. Stole the base and scored. Two steals this afternoon for Grady. It's only 12.30. Schmeltz comes set. Pitch to Grady is up and in. Ball one. Josh down there grilling those burgers. Smelling good. <laughs> Bottom of the six. Rams up 5 nothing as they bat. Wolfram at second with two outs. Pitch to Grady. Nice backhanded stop by Logan Hudson. Very, very seldom do you see the pitcher actually go as he's taken out to come in behind the plate. Nolan Schaefer was one. Clay Pittman, I remember those two here at Sonora, but outside of that, really don't see that too often. Melts wheels, fires back to second. Wolfram is caught at second base. So they pick off Connor down at second. Nice play by the Patriots. Schmeltz wheeled, fired in behind Wolfram. And he becomes the third out here. So what the plate, Gusweiler was, well, we will hopefully not see Grady bat next inning. In the inning for the Rams, no runs. One hit, no errors, and no runners left on base. We're headed to the top of inning number seven here at Crew Field at Sonora High School. Corbin and Steele trying to put the seal on it. Rams with a 5 nothing lead over the Patriots. And we'll be back right after this time out. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 576-6894. Back here, top of inning number seven we go. Rams five and Patriots nothing. Trent Wimpkin comes into first base to play for the Rams. We have a pinch hitter for the Patriots. Uh, Drew Rosengarten, the senior, will step in. Rosengarten will be pinch hitting for the Patriots here in the seventh Pitch hitting for Grant Schwab. I dropped my papers all over the place. Thank you, John. <laughs> trying to shuffle through some stats here and trying to get uh, Rosengarden 344 on the season. Has five runs batted in and two doubles. Castillo winds it up. First pitch is a strike to Rosengarden. Corbin, heck of a game. Six innings pitch, five hits. Has not allowed a run yet. Seven strikeouts and just one walk. And that was a four-pitch walk to Meyer. Swung on and missed. Castillo quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. So coming into the season, the Rams really don't have an ace. They just have like 
four really decent pitchers, just nobody that's head and shoulders above everybody else like they have in the past. That pitch is outside. One ball and two strikes. B.J. Morlock, John says, is throwing down in the bullpen for the Tenora. Pitch is swung on and missed. Down goes Rosengarten. Strikeout number eight for Corbin Castillo. That's the first out here in the seventh. Daniel Schmeltz will come to the plate. His first at bat. No relation to Judge Schmeltz from Caddyshack. Actually, it's not Schmeltz, Judge Schmeltz, but it sounds, sounds the same. Pitches outside, ball one. Schmeltz. <laughs> <laughs> no count. Swung on. Fly ball to shallow right field. McQuillan goes out, snags it for out number two to retire Schmeltz. Number five, Houston Miranda. Houston Miranda steps in. Patriots down to their final out. Five nothing. Rams lead. Five runs, eight hits, no errors for Tenora. No runs, five hits, and no errors for the Patriots. Castillo, long look in, steps off. Going to hit the reset button. Miranda, 324 coming in. He is 0 for 2. Struck out swinging in the third. Grounded to Taron Ward at third in the fifth. First pitch is a strike. Castillo, 91 pitches, 62 strikes. So basically at a third. Third of his pitch, or two-thirds of his pitches are strikes. That one's strike two. Nails that outside corner. Castile. Pitching a bad, I mean, he pitched last Saturday at Clyda. And outside of a bad break, he pitched just as effectively last Saturday as he did today. This pitch is fouled off first base side. Rams in search of their 14th win, 13 and 4. Patrick Henry, 14 and 3. We said the term of draws tomorrow. And if you come in with victories like they have in the Rams this week over back-to-back -back Columbus Grove and swung on and missed, strike three. Down goes Miranda. Castile, two strikeouts in the inning. And that finishes off the shutout win for Corbin Castile and the Rams for the Patriots in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no Ram errors, nobody left on base. Final from Tenor High School. The Tenor Rams 5 and the Patrick Henry Patriots nothing. We'll be back with the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show. And then after that, we'll have your Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back at Group Field, Rams coming in. Back-to-back -back huge wins. State-ranked Columbus Grove took them down 9-7 last night and shut out the NWOAL champion Patrick Henry Patriots here today by a score of 5-0. Corbin Steele gets the win. And for Corbin, he picks up win number 5. So Corbin moves to 5-2 and two on the season. Loss will go to Logan Hudson. Time of the game? 91 minutes. So, like we said, we flew by here at Tenora High School. No runs, five hits, no errors for the Patriots. They fall to 14 and 4. Rams, five runs, eight hits, no errors, and they improve to 14 and 4. So, both teams heading into tomorrow's term of draw, 14 and 4. And not to sound repetitive, but you come in on a. Sunday draw with wins versus Patrick Henry and Columbus Grove. That looks very impressive on your resume. 
So Coach Renolette here pick up a career win 400 earlier versus Otterville on Thursdays working his magic and if any indication of the coach that Coach Renolette is, this team here in 2023, who would have told anybody that heading into the final couple of weeks of the season, this Tenora Rams baseball team would be 14-4, and four, they would have called you nuts. So that's, you get the kids to believe in themselves, and which BR and staff does, they can pretty much accomplish anything, and nothing out is, I mean, this team can accomplish pretty much anything they want. Confidence is high, back-to-back -back huge wins, even the last Saturday loss to Kaleida, very competitive game, tough break. Um, Rams didn't get any key hits last Saturday, but a fantastic week this week. If you knock off Columbus Grove and then Patrick Henry on back-to-back -back days, you can put a couple feathers in your cap. So, Coming up, we'll have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game, and we will do that right after this timeout here on Tenora Rams Live. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much, much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery also offers custom artwork if it is needed to complete your project. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street right here in Defiance, Ohio. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. If you are looking for a customizable item, Higby Embroidery is your place. Higby Embroidery, a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Welcome back to Group Field. Rams capping off a 5-0 shutout over the visiting Patrick Henry Patriots. Welcome to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. Player of the game goes to Rams senior righty Corbin Castillo and probably one of his better pitching performances, if not the best performance he's had this season in his career. Castillo, seven innings pitched, five hits, did not allow a run, struck out nine and walked one. And that walk to Nash Meyer was a four-pitch walk. So outside of that, Castillo in complete control. 94 pitches. See you, John. 94 pitches for Castillo, 65 strikes. So Corbin definitely around the strike zone here on this Saturday afternoon. And it's a very quick game. We had one inning that seemed like it lasted half an hour. And outside of that, it was just flew by here today at Group Field. So we'll see everybody on Tuesday. I believe it will be over at Wauseana. We'll get a hold of Matt Hutchinson over there and see if we can't come over. they got a pretty decent-sized press box, so I assume we should be able to bring you that game over at Wauseon on Tuesday. So the Rams improved to 14-4, and and the Patriots dropped to 14-4 and as well. So, again, we'll see. We'll post the tournament draw tomorrow. We'll see what is ahead for the Tenora Rams, and yeah. all signs post post all signs point to them at least hosting one game here for sure for the the sectionals that they do not get a first round by some teams like to buy some teams choose to take to buy the way the rams are playing i think you want to keep on playing baseball so in rams with a five nothing shutout yeah. here thank you for joining us and as i said we'll have a decent time ahead. We should have it uploaded to YouTube tonight. Sort of, I'm going to guess around 7, 8 o'clock. For whatever reason, it just takes a long time to process a video on YouTube. Your thanks to our sponsors, BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza, and they, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Forest and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Sonora Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon, the Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill, Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postum Insurance and Investments, and Mayfield Engineer Company. Start your MEC career today. Go to MECCareers.com. Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. Rams finish the week off strong. 
with two quality wins over two really very good high school baseball teams. Have a good weekend, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.